on this electric episode of Mythbusters. Jeremy, Ching, and Conrad test a classic physics conundrum. Will the effect of a taser be increased or reduced when discharged in water? Let's meet our Mythbusters. What's up? Conrad Chow. Ching Da Hu. Jeremy DeBoer. They don't just tell the myths, they put them to the test. This team of three experts have more than 12 minutes of special effects experience between them. Don't try any of the experiments you're about to see at home. Well, instead of using a taser, we decided to use a one person machine, which is about 80,000 volts, the same as the taser. So is that what we're going to be using as a power source? Yes. Oh, well, wasn't this myth solved already? Uh, because you know what happens, you put a blow dryer in the bathtub, and it's the same thing? Not exactly. The resistance of the water may cause the effect of the taser to pass right through the water and have a decreased effect on the lucky person. I'm going to go out a limb here and say we need a test subject, some water, a wind person machine, and start testing. Okay, let's go. Generally, water in its pure form acts as an insulator, not allowing electricity to pass through. Tap water contains many different minerals and ions. When sodium chloride is placed into water, it disassociates into Na plus and Cl minus ions. So like you put some stuff in the water to make the electricity go to it? Precisely, my homie. We can add some table salt and the water become a conductor. Get some! Salt! In series, we will connect the wind thrust machine. A wind thrust machine? No, but nice try. A Wimhurst machine uses insulated desks, and their metal sectors rotate in opposite directions, passing the cross-metal neutralizer bar, and their brushes, an imbalance of charges induced, amplified, and collected by two pairs of metal combs, with points placed near the surfaces of each disc. These collectors are mounted on insulating supports and connected to the output terminals. These positive feedback increases the accumulating charges exponentially until the dielectric breakdown voltage of the air is reached and a spark jumps across the gap. So like this thing keeps spinning, spinning, spinning. They spin like my wheels on my Cadillac. You know, they spinning, spinning, spinning. Then BAM! In other words, it makes a big spark. We'll connect it in series with one of the three test setups and an ammeter measuring current 100 times a second. If the current that travels through the chicken when it is not in the water is less than the current that travels through the chicken inside the water, it would mean the effect of the taser would be amplified in water. So if the current's small outside and it's big in the water, if the po po me in the water, it's gonna hurt me more? Yes, this is because of the relation between voltage, current, and distance. In terms of Ohm's law, current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. The theoretical maximum electrical resistivity for water is approximately 182 kilo ohms, but only 5 ohms for an electrolytic solution containing salt. Whereas for humans, the electrical resistance is anywhere between 10 ohms and 6 mega ohms. If the resistance of the object is greater than the fluid it is in, then the current will not go through the object. We need to make sure the path of least resistance travels through the chicken, not just through the water. Go for it,
it seems our myth is busted. It's confirmed because given the placement of the electrodes in the water, if one heads to check it in the water and one heads to check it outside of the water, the effect of the electricity would be increased. But it's busted because if both electrodes are in the water, the effect is reduced. So we got two different scenarios putting together, which is making plausible, right?